Oh, is it over yet? <laughs> well, joining us now is Dawn, John Maffei, makeup artist extraordinaire to all those horror movies. He's going to be giving her the best Halloween makeup that she's ever had and assisting John is his son, Anthony. So we'll be coming back here periodically to see how you're turning out. And uh, you should have a very fun time trick-or-treating tonight there, Dawn, out in Fishtown. Back to you, Dana. Thank you, Richard. Joining us right now in our discussion of horrible things is Steve Vertlieb. Steve has been the uh, managing editor of Cinema Cobb magazine for the past five years. Please welcome him. <laughs> welcome to the show. Thank you. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween to you, too. You guys are... Uh... You guys are discussing some of my very favorite topics of conversation, sex I can and imagine. violence. Cinema Cobb magazine. Now, movies have changed over the years. Back in, oh, say, 1925, we had Lon Chaney in uh, Phantom of the Opera. I remember seeing that. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the 40s, though, there, seems, there was like almost a shift because there were a lot of parodies on horror flicks, like Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. Right. And then again in the 50s, you, you had all of the, that giant ants and the blob and the, the mutant lizards and Godzilla and all of those things. Mm -hmm. How have the horror flicks changed over the years and why? Well, they're, the horror films are, are really affected by what goes on in modern society. Uh, the time of the Phantom of the Opera was a really innocent time. Uh, the virginity of the heroine uh, being placed in peril by the Phantom, who obviously had lecherous intent. Uh, during the 1940s, color came in. Uh, when you mentioned the, the horror parodies, that was really toward the end of the cycle with Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. By that time, audiences had really been saturated with the thing, and there was nothing at that point that could really frighten anyone, and so it turned to comedy. However, after the advent of the nuclear bomb, uh, we got into science fiction. Now there were nuclear horrors coming. Uh, there were people who were turned into uh, mutants and androids uh, mm -hmm. simply by looking out of their windows and seeing an atom blast. Uh, so now, did those, did those movies... Glenn, I guess I should address this to you. Did those frighten us as much? I mean, a giant ant crawling along the earth. I mean, come on. Did that really frighten people? Oh, I think it did. I think it did. Because uh, uh, people's well-being was threatened in those movies. And you could see that depicted. Uh, maybe not to the extent that the psychological uh, affected us and frightened us. But uh, still, there is some threat to our well-being by seeing those images on the screen. Okay. Now, I, I remember... A lot of movies uh, in in like the '60s too. We had we had like the birds mm -hmm. and Psycho. I was afraid to go outside. You're nodding your head. I was afraid to go outside after the birds because anytime crows flew over me, I was afraid they were going to come down and get me. Oh, now these course. were more almost realistic in the sense that I suppose it could have happened. Mm -hmm. Psycho, for example, somebody right. could break in and get you while you were in the shower. Robert Block, who wrote Psycho, said at the time that it was really a good thing that uh, he didn't have the girl killed on the toilet because no one would ever go to the bathroom again. <laughs> Thank goodness he didn't. Well, we're going to take a look at a, at a clip of Vincent Price in action in a 1962 film, Tales of Terror. Let's take a look. <laughs> 